Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm going to look at some fascinating science about boiling water and paper cups. Let's check it out. Before I begin, I can now announce that I have been shortlisted for a Primary Science Teaching Award from the Primary Science Teaching Trust. It will be a few months before I know the results of the shortlisting to know whether I have received the award, but since nominations come in for this from all across the United Kingdom, it's incredible just to have made it through the panel to the shortlisting section. Thank you to every one of you for your support which has got me to this step in my journey. I'm going to start this week by pulling science and maths together as I explore boiling water. For the maths part, I'm going to draw out a line graph on some graph paper. You'll see I've already got my y-axis, which is a line that goes straight up and down, and my x-axis, which is a line that's going from left to right along the bottom. Down in the bottom left-hand corner where these two lines meet, I'm going to put a zero, and then on each line to the right of that, I'm going to put numbers increasing from 1 to 13. At the end of this row of numbers, I'm going to write time and then in brackets mins, meaning each of these numbers represents a minute of time. Moving to the y-axis on the left of the page, on the first line above the zero, I'm going to put a five, and then every line after that, I'm going to go up in jumps of five until I get up to 110. I'm going to turn my jotter on its side, and then above these numbers running up the y-axis, I'm going to write temperature, and then in brackets, a small circle and a C, meaning degrees Celsius. My line graph template now shows along the bottom I'm going to be measuring minutes and up the left I'm going to be measuring the temperature in degrees Celsius. For all of the experiments this week, you will need an adult to supervise or assist you because it involves using boiling water and open flames. Now that my line graph is set up, I'm going to set up my boiling water experiment. I'm going to put some cold water into a small pot and set this on the stove. I've set up my phone timer on the stove behind this and I've also put a thermometer into the pot of water. I'm going to check the temperature of the water every minute so that I can mark this on my line graph. Because I've not turned the stove on yet, this counts as minute zero, so I'm going to check the temperature of the water just now so that I know what my starting point is. You'll notice I'm marking this on a separate sheet to the side, but I'll just show you where it gets updated on the line graph so you can see all of the different points appearing on that graph. So at minute zero, the temperature is 13 degrees. I'm now going to turn the stove on, start the timer, and check the temperature every minute to update on my line graph. Naturally, I've sped up the footage so you don't need to watch the water for the full 13 minutes, and you'll also see me updating the line graph in the corner of my screen. When I'm marking temperatures on my line graph, I'm using a green sharpie to mark these with a cross. Not all of the temperatures land evenly on a 5 or a 0 number, so I'm having to put some slightly below or slightly above lines to show where the temperature was. Once all the crosses are on my graph, I'm going to join them all with a line, and you would normally do this with a ruler, not with your jotter on a stand and reaching around a camera. While this is going on though, I'm going to start explaining to you the process of what's happening with boiling water. Water is made up of molecules of hydrogen and oxygen which have bonded. There are two hydrogen atoms attached to one oxygen atom in a single water molecule, and this is why it's called H2O, because there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. Water consists of lots of H2O molecules all bonded together. When it's in a liquid state, these molecules are quite close together, but they do have some movement and some molecules will pass by others. When you start heating up the water though, you are inputting heat energy into the water. This gives the molecules energy and they start moving even more. As the temperature gets hotter and hotter and the molecules are taking in more of that heat energy, they start moving even faster and some of the molecules will start to break apart and rise up as gas bubbles. This is what's happening when water is boiling. 
But if you look now at my line graph, you'll notice that the temperature has stayed the same at 10, 11, 12 and 13 minutes. So why has the temperature stayed the same from 10 to 13 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius? Well, this is one of the fascinating things about water. Water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the water molecules have got enough energy to start escaping from their liquid form into water vapour, which is a gas. This is what the steam is that comes rising out of the pot or out of the kettle when you are boiling water. Any extra heat that is still being added to the pot right now because it is on the stove is turning more of that water into steam. The liquid water will not get beyond 100 degrees Celsius because any higher than that temperature, the water is water vapour, it's steam that's coming out of the pot. Once all the water's evaporated, I could get the pot up to higher temperatures by trapping the steam in it because the steam will continue to increase in temperature but at normal atmospheric pressure, the liquid water will stay exactly as it is, at 100 degrees Celsius. So, what has any of this got to do with paper cups, like I said in the introduction, when I said I was going to link the two things together? Well, I'm going to set up a candle on the base of a retort stand and light this candle. I'm then going to put an empty paper cup into a holder above the candle and watch what happens. see that very quickly the paper cup starts to brown, blacken and then burst into flame. So what do you think will happen if I put some water into a paper cup? I'm going to add a small amount of water into a paper cup, put in some food colouring so you can clearly see the water and I'm also going to mark the level on the side of the cup to show how high the water is. I'm then going to put another candle on the base of the retort stand, ignite that and then I'm going to put the cup of water in the same holder above the candle and watch what happens. You'll notice that the cup does not seem to be getting impacted by the flame at all. The previous cup we saw very quickly burst into flames, but this cup is still sitting there above the flame and nothing much seems to be happening. If we keep it on the flame for long enough, you'll notice now that steam is starting to rise out of the water. The temperature is getting up. If I kept the paper cup over the candle for long enough, this water would actually be boiling and bubbling away inside the cup. The only reason I couldn't demonstrate this is because it was too windy and the candle was getting blown out by the wind. But it's great that I did manage to get it just up to the point where the water was actually producing steam that was rising out of the cup. So why did the empty paper cup burst into flames, but the paper cup with water didn't? It didn't seem affected at all. Well, paper burns at 232 degrees Celsius. As I've said, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and can't get beyond that without being turned into steam. In this experiment, where the water is inside the paper cup, the water is drawing heat away from the paper cup. Because the water can't get above 100 degrees Celsius, this means that the paper cup also is not getting above 100 degrees Celsius. With the paper burning at 232 degrees Celsius, that is more than twice as hot as water gets when it's boiling. So the water is allowing this paper cup to survive over the flame of the candle. This final experiment has come about because of a question that a fan asked me recently. So Matt, this experiment is for you. Matt asked me what would happen if you boiled sparkling, otherwise called carbonated water. Well first, what is sparkling or carbonated water? Carbonated water is water which has had carbon dioxide gas infused into it at a high pressure, meaning that it is a bubbly, fizzy drink. You'll notice, if I open this bottle of sparkling water and pour it into the glass, that you will see it bubbling and fizzing. I'm going to pour this water into a pot and turn the stove on. 
I'm going to put the lid on the pot this time so I don't need to wait as long for the water to boil. I'm noticing while standing next to the pot that I can actually hear the gas from the water popping as it is boiling. Now that my carbonated water has reached boiling point, I'm going to take it off the stove and very carefully pour it into the same glass that I did earlier. You'll notice now that the water is not bubbling or fizzing at all, it just looks like still water. So why is the carbonated water no longer bubbling or fizzing? Well, when the carbon dioxide is infused into the water, the water is cooled to around 3 to 4 degrees Celsius. This is because gases are more soluble, that means they dissolve in liquid better when the liquid is cooler. When I have boiled a liquid, the gas is much less soluble, so the carbon dioxide has escaped from the carbonated water. Because the carbon dioxide was what was causing the water to bubble and fizz, and now that carbon dioxide has escaped the water, there's nothing there to make it bubble and fizz, so it looks and acts just like normal still water before it's had the carbon dioxide infused into it. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly really enjoyed filming these experiments for you, and thank you to Matt for that question about the carbonated water. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. And as always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here, and I've added links here to my other STEM demos I've done so far, here to my STEM career interviews, and here to my robot review videos. This has been STEM with Mr. N, exploring boiling water and paper cups.